Hey, hello, and good afternoon. All credit here goes to Tech Dancer, and this website is Tartaria.info. It's actually originally a Russian website, but as you can see, they have different language versions. So this is the English version, and obviously I can read this myself, but I think it's kind of nice that I can at least make this information available to other people. And um, well, isn't it nice to have somebody read something to you than have to read it yourself, especially with all these nice pictures? So I'm just going to read what's here. Hopefully the uh, creator of this website doesn't mind. I'm not going to cover the whole website. So, you know, there's plenty more content for people to come and visit and check out. So um, anyway, Science Fiction or Not by Tech Dancer. Seems like there's a few different authors on this website and he's maybe like the main contributor. The 19th century is so rich in secrets that respected science fiction writers of the 20th century should rather have looked into the past, but this knowledge was unavailable for an, or for an ordinary man at the time. Fortunately, the digital age has arrived, which among other benefits has brought digital archives of documents and photos from all corners of the earth. Scanning, scanning through archives of old photos you keep catching yourself thinking that you want to write a science fiction novel. Was it, excuse me, but is it really science fiction? It's pleasant to work with digital archives of Brazil, which you can click on these things, where censor has not sufficiently motivated. So maybe the censorship is not so heavy on these sites. I have to check these out myself. Sometimes you find useful things there. If New Zealand's National Library photos show its roofs cut, which could be seen even with the naked eye in all photos. <coughs> so is there like tampering with photos if the roofs are cut? I'm not sure what that means. But here's a picture, maybe this is New Zealand. Are they showing that the roof is somehow cut in a certain way? Somebody cut the image? I'm not saying this, I'm just trying to interpret what I'm reading. Okay. The Brazilian Archives has something to look at, but let's not deviate from the topic and read some science fiction. And read some science fiction. Once there were countries where such trams could be found. Look at the main photo. They look like ordinary trams, but without pantograph and wires. I have already written about these trams in various countries. There had been an argument on these trams, and I was fairly convinced that there were no miracles about their functionality. Electric power was transmitted by rails. But those readers who knew a thing or two in engineering would take it with skepticism. It is clear that transmitting electrical current this way would result in great losses of energy. Tram trams would also stop working each time it started raining. But the trams worked regularly, not just one time during a test ride. If you look closely, you won't see any wires attached to the tram, while the payload is carrying is considerable. There's a lot of people on there. It's heavy. Moreover, the interiors of such trams are quite astonishing. It turns out there used to be luxury trams. It is hard to imagine something similar somewhere in our country. Nevertheless, they existed, and just around a hundred years ago. I am particularly attracted by the dome of the ceiling. What's in it? If the, if the lighting is already there, then there is likely something else. Could there be loudspeakers? Probably not. Too bold for that time. But judging by the archival materials of those years, we do not know much about that time, so nothing can be ruled out. For example, such expositions, trade shows, used to be held in those times. This is just an exposition of electricity in Paris, 1881. If you zoom in and look carefully, you will see that the entire hall is packed with some strange items, most of which do not resemble familiar electricity generating devices. 
but for some reason there are many church-like models, arrays, sticks, and other objects that have mini domes. Okay, I'll have to start that again. This is just an, just an exposition of electricity in Paris, 1881. If you zoom in and look carefully, you will see that the entire hall is packed with some strange items, most of which do not resemble familiar electricity generating devices. But for some reason, there are many church-like models, arrays, sticks, and other objects that have mini domes. Strangely enough, a lot of the light bulbs are switched on and glow. Could there be some other outer power cable, or is it just batteries? Some speculative fiction. But what if those mini domes, like in the photo below, are the energy source? In the catalog, they are modestly called industrial products, apparently good products. One of them even looks like a menorah, and probably not just for aesthetic reasons. It probably used to light up after being placed into the chandelier and having a lamp of special design inside. It could also be done in a bit different way. This is like a laboratory. If you look closely, the twin lamps move up and down by means of suspensions. But where are the electric wires or gas pipes? if there is gas. The main secret behind lamps work probably revolves around the counterweight, particularly the thing inside it. As far as I know, it is called tain, tin amalgam. Such items used to be done not only for chandeliers, of course. Apparently they were massively molded on poles, giving our trams the power to move. But then something happened, and the trams were switched to another type of power supply, as you have already seen in this photo. But the mini domes were still standing for some time after that, probably hidden in the nearby house where they could still be used. Or maybe someone just forgot to dismantle them. It happens. How can we be sure about anything if even the public toilets looked like they were taken from an exhibition? This is a sort of model of the St. Peter's Cathedral, but for some other purpose. The framing of the dome's bottom is also done for a reason. Oh, I, I suppose they're talking about this device. Oh, this looks like a public toilet, like a urinal. You can go to and you can, you can pee. Or maybe even the other one. Okay. If you can imagine what the fractal geometry is, then you can see it here in its pure form. I think like these things. All the fringe here is not for beauty. This type of roof is nothing else than a modified model of the dome's head of an orthodox church, where two spheres stand at the top. The metal material of rafters forms a head and the pommel over the sphere from above is moved, in our case, down and dispersed along the perimeter of the roof. It looks very competent from a technical point of view but any maintenance at such height would be complicated. The same principle is also used in the following structures. I, I'm not sure I actually follow that. I don't understand what's being said. Such fantastic countries where there was no need to extract oil and wage wars for it could be found on all continents where civilization existed until a narrow circle of people came up with an ingenious way of enrichment. But it's a completely another story. I think I know what he's talking about. He's talking about usurping power by means of maybe eliminating free energy and then implementing oil and gas and other things. I think that's what he's saying. I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. But since we have started discussing domes and spheres, we should take a look at something else. You might want to go to the website and look at these. Has anybody... Has anybody ever seen spheres on domes made of glass? Probably not. It can't be entangled with lamps this way either. So how could this sphere glow like a giant light bulb? Moreover, the brightness of the sphere in the first photo even smoothly decreases, which contradicts all physical laws. Some science fiction again, but this is all garbage compared to, mo compared to a generator that would have enough energy to simultaneously power all those illuminations. Just gonna stop it here. Most likely, if there were incandescent lamps 
the power would be considerable. Let's mentally return to the picture from the electric exhibition, I think that's the Paris one, where there any were there any generators of sufficient power that convert that could convert atmospheric electricity into usable energy, for example for the operation of mechanical devices? It probably could. Um no ignoring or outgoing pipes, no nanometers. This is not a tank for brewing beer. Does it remind you of anything? I don't follow. It's a chapel with water supply inlet located in an ordinary town of the Russian Empire, obviously long gone. A deep water pump was inside that chapel submitting water to the first level of water lifting building, but the engine valves were most likely inside. An early version of the photo was those valves visible, but instead of the pump, the transmission is connected to the collective distribution system. Quite a sophisticated system. Something like this is contained inside this. Is that what we're saying? These are water pumps? So you have like energy transmission through water pumps? I don't get it. Okay. Well, that's the end of the article. So, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're more interested, you could go check this website out. I'm not going to make more videos on this website. Well, we'll see. Thanks for watching.